Welcome back to the Morning Brief on Channels Television. And uh, as we switch gears now, you know what they say about image being everything. In a room, the image not only compels heads to turn, but it also determines, you know, how much money comes in, how the deals are sealed. So one woman that is determining your image in a very good way, and not just doing that, but also empowering others to become image makers in terms of your total outlook, joins us now on the morning brief for the next leg of our conversation. Join us now as we welcome Unique Alicia, MD Signature Stitches. Good morning and welcome to the morning brief. Good morning. Yeah, and you're looking like a million dollars, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, we get to have this conversation. So, tell us, how did this all start? How did you begin to imagine all of this? Um, is it something that started along the way or it has always been in it for you to be able to imagine it and create it. All right. Um, first, I want to thank you for having me on this wonderful platform. It's my pleasure to be here. Um, first, my name is Unique Alicia. And uh, fashion has been a thing that I have always loved. Uh, right from uh, my secondary school days, I look forward to, I always want to look good. And then at the university level, I that started coming up more. So after my, before the, my graduation, yeah, I'm like, okay, I think I can go develop my skill more into this. Since uh, people are always complimenting on what I put on and the outcome has been amazing. So, I went into some research where I can get the necessary skills to becoming a professional fashion designer. And so the journey got started. Before my graduation year, I was able to gather some skill. I've traveled to places, Lagos, some African countries, you know, to meet with the top designers where I acquired the skills. Now, when I set up signature stitches and I started displaying my designs, when people pass by to see my showcase, they're like, wow, he is amazing. I now say to myself that, fine, if people can appreciate this craft this much, then I think it's time to impart this to the people, you know, to the members of the society. And so I set up signature stitches fashion school. In fact, after one year of training program, crowds were becoming much, and the training somehow started dominating every other activities. So I decided to give that area more focus in the fashion training. Um, I think we've been in the training program for close to 80 years now, and every year we graduate almost 100 students. In this January to March now, we have admitted already about 50 students. So that's to say that this year might graduate up to 150. And uh, when I see the amazing things we teach our students and how productive and creative they come out after our training, I decided to come up with a program called Style Expenditure, where students showcase what they have learned with us in a period of six months or one year as a case may be. Okay, let's, let's talk about, besides your training of these students and all of that, let's talk to yourself sitting in front of a client who is making a request because we want to dig deep and drill down. Um, oh. We've seen situation of uh, what I ordered versus what I got. <laughs> now, a client will walk up to you and say, oh, man, for instance, what you're wearing now, um, why it's very flattering and is, uh, is accentuated and looking good is because perhaps maybe your shoulders work with it, your, the shape of your head works with it, and there are so many things that come together to make it work. But you're sitting down with this client who say, I like this particular design. And in, before your conscience, <laughs> your conscience knows that this design is not going to look good on this individual. How do you come out honestly to tell the person, you're going to look 
a bit not flattering, you know, not as nice as you expect it to be. How do you come across to be sincere with clients? Because sometimes I feel for um, tailors or designers like you, it's difficult to convince people otherwise. Yeah, um, thank you so much for that wonderful question. I think this is actually one of the things that I also teach my students. You know, as a fashion professional, it's always important to do a consultation with your client. And this consultation includes their body size and also the type of fabric they are supposed to use. Now, when you see a design and you like it, that doesn't mean it's going to suit well for you. So it's always important to look at a client body size and you politely give them an advice on what will look better for them. Now, if I've worn this stuff and you like it and you admire it, as a designer, I can come up with something creative as well that will fit your body size so that when you wear it, people will be, people will be able to admire it on you as well. So that is it. So it's, it includes the choice of fabric, the body size, and the rest of it. But let you know fashion has evolved in the sense that there are a lot of innovation in the fashion industry now, whereby we enhance body shape from the hip padding, bust padding, the waist snatching, and the rest of them, where you see a size 10, all snatching like a size 8. And the rest of them. <laughs> 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 I don't even know where to we're come just, in now. We're just squirming and chuckling uh, because we know where that's going and coming from. <laughs> well, from, from the f feminine perspective, you know, um, what I order should, you know, come in as in what I order regardless of my size. I don't know if Unique Alicia has a different perspective. Isn't it a product of, you know, bad tailoring and bad designing when what I ordered is different from um, what I got? Um, yes, there are scenarios where the, the, the problem actually, you know, comes from the designer in question. And some designers, they are not honest enough to let their clients know that I can make this, you know. But then, sometimes the person's body size doesn't fit in. You know, in, the, in, the, in, in our fashion designing, one of my courses is, is a lecture on fabrics. There's a type of fabric that you use to make a design. You won't achieve what you get compared to a particular material you use. For instance, you see on Instagram or on social media where what I ordered versus what I got. When you compare the fabric you use, it's totally different. And clients, some of them are very funny in the sense that they will compare you to use the fabric they provide for you. And when I have such a client, I would like to come to an agreement like, if you don't mind, I can abandon this fabric and get something that will suit this particular design that you want. And just imagine if you bring a, a one-top designer's design from the ground as you make for you, when we know that the fabric alone is worth over 300 to 400 times. Now you want to use a lace fabric of about 20,000 to get the same look. It's not going to be possible. So I always advise my client, if you cannot afford the fabric that produces the same design, it's better we look for a design that suits your fabric. So avoid what I order, but what I got. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you for that heads up. Um, we'll, we'll try to remember that because we love to look like all of these fashion icons, but then uh, they cost a lot, apparently. I just realized that I actually learned tailoring at some point <laughs> in my life. <laughs> and it wasn't the prettiest period. You know, you had to learn how to tack buttons. You had to learn how to do all of those tiny things. And it needed a lot of um, focus, a lot of attention to details. And honestly, it's sometimes tough to find uh, fashion designers. And there's a lot of them, but it can be tough to find those who will do what you really want them to do to the detail. So I'd like you to also speak to us about some of the challenges you face in trying to deliver that work that people want. We'll talk about the economic angle, how empowering this is as well, because there's also the money angle. But so maybe we can help we can meet you halfway. Uh, what do you need from us? We give you time. Sometimes you disappoint. But you have to tell us that, ah, it's because of this, this, that. But we don't quite understand. So is there, a, is there something you want to tell people out there such that they can understand your position as a fashion person and maybe uh, approach with better understanding? All right. Um, as, as a fashion designer, I, you know, trying to make 
designs for clients. But some of these clients, they need to understand designs take time and is a thing of creativity. So if you want a good outcome, you ought to give a designer enough time, a considerable an, an amount of time for the person to be able to put the designs together. And dressmaking is in phases. So if a design is going to take three months and you want the designer to deliver it in one month, of course, you know, that's not going to be achievable. If that eventually happens, it's going to be a quack design at the end of the day. And then secondly, the other thing we encounter most times is when someone gives you a particular design, it's somehow a bit difficult to get the exact fabric to make a replicate of what that person is. So if you don't have the exact fabric, you may not get the exact look of what the person wants. And they, I think the popular one is finance. Someone to pay less for a bigger job, which is not possible. In designs, you can't cut costs. We all know that anything lost, lost is all about money, where you need to use almost half a million or even a million plus to bring out a very lost, lost piece. And when you see these things on Instagram, you should know that these people are putting in enough money and time to be able to create that. So taking that to another designer and cut corners, you're just trying to frustrate the person's effort and pressuring the person unnecessarily. Right. Uh, I, we've also noticed, thank you, by the way, for that. We've also noticed that you're, you're your model. So you're not just a fashion designer. You also model your outfit. And I imagine models out there thinking, uh -uh, give us some job too now. Let us model for you. <laughs> so what's going on? You're like all-rounded. <laughs> Yeah, um, when I started fashion, day, you know, I was wearing a few of my pieces. And I think I've got some number of truths online that ah, I get a model to do this for you. You can be doing this. And just like I say, that practice makes perfect. And, you know, I started improving on myself, taking some personal classes. And because I run a fashion school, I see the need for me to model my designs because. One of the things I teach my students is that imagine you're not eating what you're serving somebody. Nobody's going to take it from you. Mm. And I have this popular quote that goes this way, that every day is a fashion show. The world is your runway. That is to say that every day as you're going out, you ought to represent your personality, your brand. There's no day I go out and I don't get contact. Two, three people be like, oh, I love what you're wearing. I'm like, oh, I can make this for you. I'm a designer. They say, oh, really? Can I see your handles? And before you know, so every day I step up with my designs. In fact, what I call people look forward to see me in an event because they know I always kill it. <laughs> and that way, I told myself, if you start training with us in a period of one to two months only, as, you know, unbelievable this can be, in the space of one month, two months, you are already making money from the system. So wow. this so, is a show because yes. So we can if see that. Up, but, so we can clearly see as we begin to wrap up. Uh, we can see that you're your own billboard exactly. So no no need to pay for billboards. So everywhere you go, you just move around and make sure you get that deal. But one quick question in thirty seconds, if you give us answer: How much of technology is involved in what you do? How much of what? Technology. Okay. Um, yeah, lots of it. It's not just a uh, one month thing we have. Uh, we have to bring in some equipment, finishing equipment. I have, if, if you check the pictures already, we have lots of uh, finishing equipment. Uh, in areas of power, we have professionals that also assist in what I do. So uh, we bring in lots of technology to be able to achieve a very professional outfit. It's okay. not a one month. Brilliant. Uh, and, and what you're wearing is beautiful, by the way. And in 10, 10, 10 seconds, uh, are you affordable? If I were to slide into your DM to find out how much this will cost, <laughs> I hope it's not breakneck. 10 seconds. Uh, people always say that. The thing is that I'm not cheap, but I'm affordable. <laughs> okay, so maybe we can do a song, I am affordable, but on a final note, <laughs> pardon me, people have also asked, um, how did you start up? Where did you get the funds to start up? Because it's always a, a major question. So did you have someone funding you? Did you have a benefactor? Or you literally started from 20 naira, 1,000 and the rest? Uh, actually, I'm a fashion guru. 
in the sense that I do other things. Before the fashion itself, I was into a contract job. I supplied sand, cheap paint. I have a block industry. And then I was able to gather some little fund and then I invested into the fashion mm. industry. Brilliant. I started at you. Yes. Beautiful, amazing Amazon that you have here. Unique Alicia, uh, fashion consultant, also empowering many other Nigerians. We want to thank you very much for your time uh, on the program today. And we look forward to having you uh, subsequently. Thank you. And that's it on this segment. Up next, we'll be talking music, music and so many other aspects to it, management, you know, and the like. So stay with us. We'll be right back.